What's up friends of the good mood? This is Money and welcome to the biggest early test server video log I've ever managed to do because we have a gigantic test server coming in this Saturday guys with massive changes or news and stuff like that. All right, let's not waste too much time. We have three new weapons. We have a new King of the Hill game mode change. We have a shock train rebalance and a healing mechanism changing on Wayland and Mender. Let's go right through that here. First and foremost, King of the Hill reworked, okay? So far only four maps developed in this test server coming up. It's not, those are not life changes on the life server. It's only test server for the next week and first. And then some of those, or hopefully maybe all of them will make it into the life server then. Uh, the King of the Hill rework, okay? So far only four maps, Carrier, Dead City, Power Plant and Springfield. Four beacons, okay? Instead of five beacons now, it's only going to be four. And um, the beacon locations changed, moved more to the center. So this is how it looked before. You see the five beacons, right? And they will be moving closer to the center now, like this, okay? This is the new layout, and this was the old layout. So overall, the action will play more centered, and you don't have to walk so far to get to the next beacon. Uh, you know, and I guess that Pixonic's hoping that this will enforce, you know, more combat and more clash, and less walking away just you know sitting on beacons with no enemy contact right so beacon zone increased by 30 percent you can see here also on dead city this is the small and the old beacon zones the new ones are 30 percent bigger and more centered all right and the next notification beacon it's also turned off this was springfield all right and the next Springfield will look like this in King of the Hill. Four very close together beacons. No longer you have to run very far to get to a point um, to the next beacon. And here is a Power Plant, my favorite map, one of my favorites. No, I think it is my favorite. And then comes Valley. And here you see the old version and the new version. It's pretty much the same here, except for this one here. It's out of the, uh, the, uh, the race, pretty much. So, uh, and the beacon, you know, notification for the next one is turned off, which means you can no longer walk already knowing where the next beacon will be and just sit and wait there, okay? So once again, trying to enforce more combat and enemy contact rather than sitting around waiting for beacons to fill up or come an active, okay? So this is the king of the hill. I'm not sure if that will fix it because let's face it, in my opinion, the problem also is that in king of the hill, you're only rewarded for, you know, capping beacons. It doesn't matter how many enemies you killed. It doesn't matter how much damage you have done and how much you allowed your team to actually get the the beacons because of your hard work to make it free of enemies you know and uh, that is all not fixed it's still only so that you'll be rewarded with the you know gold and and, and keys and stuff like that uh, for uh, capping beacons and I think unless they ch also change it a little bit so that you know also the reward system it also includes or considers how much damage you have done how many enemies you have killed uh, unless that comes I feel like it's still gonna be a lot of you know sitting around at beacons then uh, but let's see okay this is just the first concept there working on this further that doesn't mean this is the final version okay apparently and that's a good thing they have recognized that the king of the hill is flawed and people are probably skipping this more than other game modes these days because it's not as much fun to play all right then the next thing is three new weapons okay and we're not not talking about any weapons we're talking about energy shotguns so these weapons bypass energy shields and they immobilize the enemy because those are new rooting weapons too same as shredder and pulsar the shotgun here roots when it hits you every pallet has a chance to cause the rooting chance okay and um and it's very deadly at short range obviously as a shotgun you know the description says weapon system which fires a series of energy shard charges in a form of a horizontal arc okay um not not vertical like this or both like a round one pretty much it's gonna be a horizontal uh you know arc in which they fire these things so you can hit a lot of enemies in front of you without wasting pellets to the into the skies and into the ground okay so that's what they mean with horizontal arc capable of hitting and immobilizing several enemies deadly at close range um the first one is a light weapon level 8 it's called halo okay on level 8 it does 3772 damage per shot that's all the pellets combined if all of them hit 500 meters range and five uh, five shots and it reloads one shot per second okay and i'm not sure what the fire rate is like it's probably more than one shot per second maybe two shots per second or so the root chance is 3.5 percent per pellet i don't know how many pellets are being fired by this weapon maybe 10 maybe 15 so if you 
you're really close, you have a very high chance to root your target with one shot, okay? And the root duration is going to be five seconds. So for five seconds, your enemy will not be able to move while you hammer at him with shotguns, okay? Crazy. And um, so no longer you need to combine Shredder and, uh, and Gust. You can now just go with Halo. And, uh, and that's it. You don't need Gust and Halo. You can go with Halo directly if you want. And uh, since it's an energy-based weapon, it will also bypass energy shields. Keep that in mind too. Making it maybe even better in some occasions than Gust will be. Although Gust will probably still have more damage output uh, in general, the raw damage output. But, you know, being able to immobilize your target so that every shot is a full-on hit. No dashing, no nothing. That will make a change and not having to go through energy shields. Medium weapon Corona. That's this one right here, ladies and gentlemen. It looks sick. Look at this. Look at this bad boy. Let's go in closer. You see this? I need to get away from here a little bit. Look at that. That looks pretty sick, doesn't it? With a freaking, you know, energy in the front of this weapon. Pretty cool. And it does 4,800 damage per shot. Also 500 meters range. Also energy based, all that. Ammo five shots. One shot per second reload. Um, so the same reload pretty much, but the root chance here is only 1% per pallet I'm not sure if the weapon will simply fire more pallets to make up for it or if it's meant to just deal more better damage But having a slower root chance so if you want to be the best router you need to use a light weapon pretty much I'm not sure we're gonna see all this on Saturday on our test server keep in mind test server video coming up on Saturday around 2 p.m. 3 p.m. my time uh, depends where you live whatever time it is for you but as soon as I can i'm gonna bring you the gameplay video with all these new weapons and actions and by the way if you want to see this and you want to receive the notification and you have not yet subscribed to the channel please consider doing this right now it'll help me out a lot and it will get you notified when these videos come up um so so this is the weapon here uh, the, uh it, it's 4800 damage so already a lot more than the light version and um and yeah so but the biggest damage difference is gonna be the heavy weapon called glory it's gonna be this one right here um Oops, that was too far zoomed out. This is the heavy version called Glory. Look at that bulky beast. Oh my goodness, is that a beast. Alright, so basically this thing has, instead of 4,800 damage, 11,300. But it will probably shoot much slower. It has the continuous reload, but only one shot every two seconds, okay? Now, I'm not sure what the sh the firing rate is. I think the firing rate is not listed in these information here. Uh, I would guess that the light weapon fires, uh, you know, quicker than uh, the medium weapon maybe having the same speed, I don't know. But the heavy weapon will probably fire slower and therefore has to have more damage per shot, okay? Um, so it will deal more damage than medium, but it will probably not deal two and a half times that much uh, because of the uh, different fire rate. That's my, uh, you know, estimate or my... my uh, yeah, my assumption here. Damage per shot, 500 meters range as well. Energy weapon, bypassing energy shield, five shots in the drum, one every two seconds. So that indicates a slower firing rate, I suppose. Reload is uh, the, the root chance is 1.1 sec uh, percent per pallet, okay? And the root duration is also, once again, five seconds as to all of these weapons right here. So uh, I can't wait to see this weapon in action and these weapons on the test server coming up, guys. That is going to be a big thing coming up. And um, and now coming to the shock train rebalance, which is right here, we have a um, firing mechanism mechanism change. It now fires same as the Arbalis does, which is something I have hoped for for a while, right? I've been asking you guys in, the stream, uh, in live streams and keep saying that uh, the big shock pro uh, problem with the shock train is it requires no skill. You just hit the button and the weapon always hits you, no matter what. Even if you're double dashing around the corner and he just, boom, hits you right before you get around the corner there. And uh, now the weapon is like our ballast. It's tested on a light server first and it's not final. There might still be some other adjustments coming. Um, the manual targeting that it requires now, like the Arbalest weapon, no longer you have a lock-on that goes across half your screen, so that with the Bulgazar you can stand there, lock on to your enemy, have your shield pointed to him and fire at the same time. Now you need to look at him, put the shield aside for a second, look at your enemy, aim right, fire, 
look back with your shield, okay? So that's how the new Shock Train Bolgazari will look like with this new weapon, uh, with the Shock Train rebounds that we're testing right here. Um, at, at long range, there is still the targe targeting computer that will aim for you, okay? Like Trebuchets or Arbatas. These weapons don't miss at long range because the weapons does it for itself, for, for you, the whole aiming part. But if you're closer to the enemy, the closer you get, the more accurate you have to aim. So you now can, with, an, uh, with a Bolgazari or even, look, let's say even a Komiho with fast dashing, you can fool the shock train and make it miss, okay? Especially at your closer range, because then you have to aim more accurately. That is pretty good. However, this is also having an additional problem. That means the weapon will no longer have a lock-on. That will mean that from this point on, if that comes to the life server, the weapon will be ready to fire at you quicker. If, for example, you have a stealth jump, you land, you get come out of stealth. Previously, the weapon required two seconds to lock onto you or three. Now the weapon will be immediately ready to insta-kill you the second you come out. And you will probably even be able to fire the weapon at a stealth inquisitor without, for example, waiting for his, you know, stealth to drop. You can probably j just shoot in his general direction and make a hit. So um, it, it re reinforces the weapon to require more skills, which is a good thing. But in my opinion, the base problem of the weapon hasn't been changed yet, which is 71,000 damage instantaneously with, on a Spectre to a guy. Just boom, like that, in one split second. And that is the big problem, okay? And then additional 30 to 40,000 with a chain reaction to the other guys. Which is the pro the, the thing is, you cannot walk in safety, you have no... No way to correct a little mistake. Every hit you take is fatal immediately with a 70-something thousand damage immediately. That is what allows the Spectre to just jump up, have a split second of line of sight, boom! And all the damage is done, okay? And um, and my my suggestion for the Shock Train is that the weapon fires like, uh, like Gecko. And it needs to be l maintained firing at the enemy like a continuous beam. Zzz for five seconds and within those five seconds you you deplete your weapons charge and you deal the same amount of damage okay it's a medium weapon it's not supposed to deal a hundred thousand damage every eight seconds or ten seconds instantaneously okay it's not a heavy weapon it's a medium weapon and it goes on to the most powerful and dangerous setups in the game so we need to make this a little bit more balanced in my opinion and if it would fire like gecko continuous beam at the enemy and when the beam is maintained then the damage is also coming uh, gradually and also sharing the damage with teammates and a chain reaction but this way you can you can get like oh oh I'm getting hit and you walk behind cover and maybe you have only taken half the damage and not all the damage immediately that would be my suggestion to help the shock train problematic uh, or problem to go away a little bit uh, it will still be massive powerful because it will still be do this 100,000 damage with a chain uh, in these 5 seconds. But at least it gives you an option or a chance to dodge some of the damage or evade some of it, okay? Okay, and the last change is that the Wayland and Mender healing mechanism is changed. You're now having a 100% heal back, okay? There's no restriction anymore. There's no health going away anymore from your allies or yourself. You can heal yourself up as much as you want to back to 100% and the your friends and allies too I think maybe uh, that will help bringing more of these healing bots into the game because right now I must say that I am probably the only one running these things I've not seen anybody else except maybe the other youtubers who also have have them on the uh, you know press accounts but other than that, I don't think people are really going for them because they want to just do the maximum damage with the shock train probably and stuff like that and uh, and not running around as a supporter or a healer. However, these bots are very powerful, which you have seen in my 100k subscriber video in the moment when I showed you the zapping mender as my favorite, one of my favorites. Um, how I was able to take on three enemies at once Together they were fighting me and I killed all three of them with just the mender based on the damage resistance speed and firepower you have which is pretty good but the problem is always I think that people want, weren't interested enough maybe because you can't heal up all the way okay so this is something they're working and they're making now for the test server no more damage restriction or you know is it diminishing returns is that the right word I'm looking for but you know what I mean right that the, the blackout grayed out area that you cannot heal up back and that will now disappear, you can heal up all the way. So that is the whole test server summary. Also keep in mind one more thing, the plasma buck on Tarans. 
even trebuchets or abales was affected by it or uh, the ballista uh, you know magnums and then an, an, an redeemer all these plasma bug weapons there should be they should be getting fixed within the next days on the life server not test server on the life server immediately that's what they're working on right now. I put it in here because it's an it's it's like a, a the information fits to the whole, whole summary right here, although it's not test server related. And uh, if you haven't yet seen the video I was sp speaking about using this particular setup right here in uh, and and taking on all the three enemies at the 100k subscriber special with a big giveaway by the way, where we give away 200 robots, it's still going. And uh, then check out the video in the upper right corner of the screen. It leads you right to that. And um, other than that, guys, let me check. Oh my goodness, the video went way too long. More long, longer than I wanted it to be. I need to wrap this video up, guys. I know the attention span of people on YouTube isn't 20 minutes altogether for compressed information. So I have to make it quick and say thank you, guys, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and comment down below. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe as brutal as a man can hit for more. Thanks for bearing with me. You guys are awesome as always. See you guys on Saturday in the test server. Money Gaming signing off. Bye-bye.